still in our home offices. I'm Richard Rellis here with columnist Bob Rob. There's been people protesting the governor's executive orders telling us to stay home, uh, arguing constitutional grounds. Uh, I've heard 14th Amendment and, and other amendments. Is there a constitutional argument against the governor's stay home orders? I don't think that there is much of an argument uh, that the U.S. Constitution uh, restricts what a governor such as Doug Ducey can do in response to an emergency at the state level. Um, the federal constitution circumscribes what the federal government can do. And Ducey, unlike um, many other governors, has expressly exempted from his stay-at-home orders uh, constitutionally protected activities such as um, speech or religion. On the other hand, I think there is a substantial legal question as to whether his actions, and particularly the stay-at-home order, uh, exceeds his statutory authority granted by the legislature to manage a public health emergency. That is outlined, and you said it only has specific steps uh, you say this in your column, that there's only specific steps a governor can take. Yes. Uh, they, for example, in terms of limiting the activities of individuals, the statute gives the governor quarantine power. Uh, he can, for anyone who's been diagnosed with the disease or has come in contact with someone who's been diagnosed with the, with the disease, order people or groups of people into quarantine. But there has to be notice and specificity about who's doing it. There's due process rights, and you can go to court and just say, don't do that. Um, I don't fall within to this category. There's nothing in the statutes which says that the governor can restrict the activities of people with no known connection to the disease. Um, that's an authority that he is saying is implied. Um, but it's not uh, explicit, and it's kind of hard to understand why you would need due process to quarantine people who have been diagnosed with the disease, but have no due process rights or review for limiting the activities of people who have no known connection to the disease. And I guess the question is, once all this is behind this, let's hope it's sooner than later. Will there still be any political will to look at what was done, whether the governor was right, and whether future governors should have the same sorts of power? Well, I don't think there's any point, since the governor has effectively repealed his stay-at-home order, even though technically it's still in effect till May 15th. I don't think there's any point now in litigating the um, legal issues. But at least ambiguity exists in the statute as to the authorities that the governor has in managing a public health emergency. And there ought to be a deliberation and a conscious decision by the legislature as to whether this range of authority is what is intended or desired and whether there needs to be additional checks on what a governor does rather than simply what the statute currently provides, which the legislature can rescind the declaration of a public emergency. I don't think that discussion should occur right now or at whatever kind of rushed, revived session of the legislature we have. Let's sit on it, let's reflect upon it, and revisit the issue of what authority we want to give the governor to manage a public health emergency in the next legislative session. But it shouldn't be left to implied powers or ambiguity or counting on nobody suing. There should be a conscious decision as to how much authority we want to give and whether what the governor did is what we want a governor to do in these circumstances or whether it exceeds what we think a governor should be empowered to do on his own initiative and with no checks and balances. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of discussion about how this went down on the other side of it, and hopefully uh, we'll get there sooner than later.